Hey everyone, I'm Liz Merrick. Welcome to the Sugar Geek Show live. We're cake decorating live today. A um, couple of things, if you are hearing this portion of the live, you are probably watching the replay. So I won't be able to answer your questions like live live, but please leave them in the comments if you have questions about this process and I can answer them later. Blah, 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 whatever. Stop talking, Liz. Let's get to the cake decorating part, right? First thing I'm gonna do is bake my board. Baking your board is just a way of covering your board in fondant. This is especially nice thing to do if you're using a cake drum, which is a little bit ugly to look at in my opinion. And uh, I'm just going to take some blue fondant and roll it out. I uh, hand colored all of these colors. I didn't buy any pre-made colors because pre-made colors to me are a little bit soft. And I'm just going to cover just the outside area with some vegetable shortening to get it to stick. Just using my fondant smoother. This is the uh, cake the size of the cake that's gonna be going on my cake board. So that way I'm not wasting any fondant. I'm gonna put this into my oven, which is already preheated at 170 degrees Fahrenheit to bake it, which is going to harden this fondant on the outside so it won't get messed up when we actually add our cake to it. All right, so I'm rolling out yellow fondant that has about a teaspoon of Tylose powder mixed in. Tylos powder is a gum tragenth, and it basically just hardens the fondant. I have two circle cutters here, and then you wanna take a little bit of vegetable shortening and just put that on the edge. So I just cut out, I made about 60 rings, and I just cut them all out like this first. And then I take the slightly smaller cutter, make sure I'm centered, and then you go back and forth like this and that gets a nice clean cut. Carefully take that off. This obviously can be reused again. So then I put these on a pan to dry and through the magic of television, we have these guys. These have been drying for just a day, not even that long. So now they're ready to go. So this is definitely something you can do ahead of time so you don't have to worry about them not being dry enough. You can also do this out of gum paste. If you live in a super humid area, you might want to consider gum paste. It's not humid here, I don't have to worry about it. Let's do some palm tree leaves. This does not have any Tylose powder in it, so it's a little bit softer. The reason I don't have any Tylose in it is because this is gonna be going onto the side of the cake. So I don't want it to be this hard chunk of fondant on the outside of the cake. All right, so some palm tree leaves. Just gonna cut them out. Just a little bit. Let's do some flowers. I am using a little five petal floral punch. That's such a small flower. If you don't use a punch, you just have to stick like a toothpick in there every single time to get it out. And it's one of those things that's like so much easier just to do that. Everything I make, I'm just putting on this mat. We're gonna put squares on the outside of this cake. I see so many people complaining about this process. They see something like tons and tons of squares and you think, oh my God, that's gonna take forever. That's gonna, that's gonna be too much work. And I don't get that because if you actually time yourself to see how long it would take to put squares on a cake, it's not really that long. It's no longer than piping something or, oh my God, ruffles. That's, that's all takes a long time. We're gonna be using a tool that didn't exist when I was a cake decorator. But uh, before I was a cake decorator, what I used to do to make squares was I would take a ruler and I would literally just cut lines like this, da, 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 da. And then I would turn it and cut this way. And that was, that's how I would make my squares. If you're using a single square cutter to cut squares, stop it. Because <laughs> it's not even perfectly square. It's, um, it's got rounded edges. So uh, this is the PME Geometric Multi-Cutter for squares. We're gonna go with the big ones because <laughs> we don't want to do as much work. Just gonna put the fondant on some parchment. I'm just going to straight up cut 
Look at those beautiful squares. And I do not want to touch these at all. No wiggle, no wiggle. And then I'm just kind of pushing them so that they pop out. Okay. All right, and then I can just, that one's a little bit wonky. Okay, so Liz did not fully cut on some of these edges. That's my fault. It's fine, I have plenty. I'm trying to move this onto my cutting board. There you go. Sometimes I'll use uh, quarter sheet boards as like trays. Let's do the dark brow. Make sure we actually press through everything. There you go, that's what it's supposed to do. But can't get over it. We're gonna make four clouds because they're gonna, we only have enough space between the trees. There are three trees, so four clouds. I'm gonna use this little round cutter here. Another little circle. So I know you guys can't see this, but I'm just barely indenting the fondant. And then I'm making a little circle in the middle. So I just made a circle, circle, circle in the middle. And then I'm just gonna go straight line. I used to have a cloud cutter, but now I'm missing. Just use it as a template. And then when you flip your fondant over, there's no lines on the other side. So you can kind of draw something out that you don't feel confident in making and then flip it over. When you're covering a six inch or really any size cake, more fondant is better. You wanna have enough fondant that it's gonna drape over with, with room to spare. And you're gonna have less troubles getting it to um, behave. I roll out my fondant very thin. I don't think fondant should be something that you taste. It should just be decoration. Up onto the rolling pin. And roll. You see how much extra I have here? It's going to basically cover itself. You see all this extra space, all this extra fondant gives it room to stretch so you don't have those really difficult wrinkles to deal with at the bottom. Spot right there, okay. cover it. If you have any like little small imperfections, like it's fine, we'll fix that. See how fast that was? Very, very fast. More fondant is better. All right, so I'm gonna cut my fondant about half inch, quarter inch away from the base. Take this off. You can use a cutting board. Just something to flip it back over, right? So we're flipping it back over. Parchment is just so we don't damage the top of our cake. And you're gonna take your smoother and just bring that fondant straight up. So if you ever see cakes that have like, you know, they're stacked on top of each other and there's no border, there's nothing covering the bottom edge of the, the cardboard, this is how you do that. Now, part of the upside down technique is that you take your fondant smoother and you push down around the edge to get that super sharp edge. Take my nice clean X-Acto blade, come up right through the top. I'm just gonna trim off that fondant so it's flush. I'm gonna turn this back over. So I'm gonna put my six inch on top of an eight inch cardboard so that I can um, move it around and work on it without damaging anything. Let's go ahead and just decorate this one. I'm just going to make a couple of quick palm trees by rolling out some brown fondant. And then I'm just going to twist it just to get some texture. Cut the end flat, cut the top flat. I am using water, a very small amount of water. You don't want to put too much water on the cake. 
and you only want to put it where you really want something to be because if you put water on fondant it dissolves the sugar and makes it sticky which is why we're using water but um, if you put it anywhere you don't want something to be you're going to leave a mark so just very very lightly just a small amount of water clouds on in between All right, I'm gonna put some little flower tufts now. So I need 12. Put a little bit of cornstarch on my fingers so that this little tiny piece of fondant sticks to the cake and not my fingers. Some work that I didn't get paid for. I have tiny little drages that I'm gonna put in the center. Now we're done. done. <laughs> so this goes into the fridge to stay nice and firm. Our lovely cake board is nice and firmed up. And, and then that should just fit right inside that space. And then quickly, like crazy, I'm gonna start adding my squares. So this is one of those, those like tricks where it's like, okay, you might, you might not um, be fully good at just keeping things really clean. Part of it is just making your stuff ahead of time and letting it set for a second. You know, don't, you don't have to make it and then put it on the cake right away because then it tends to want to warp, you have problems, and then you're sad. That's not what we want. I feel like this is where you put on music. <laughs> my final squares just in half. So if you weren't covering the top of this cake with like a decoration that's gonna be covering the edge, you would have to, you know, put a layer of fondant over the top and trim off the edge. But we're not doing that because we're gonna be using buttercream to make some leaves. So I'm just gonna put that last layer on all the way around so satisfying. For my six inch cardboard, you could use a cake pan, whatever. Just centering and I'll make a little mark so that I know where the second tier is gonna go. And I'm using straws to support my tier. So I go in the center first, straight down. I mark with the top of my thumb nail where the top of the cake is and then I cut Try not to send them flying. This is now my master straw. <laughs> and just kind of like line them up. Make sure you're cutting those nice and flat. One in the center. And I think a lot of people make the mistake of putting the straws like really far away from the edge. You want your straws to be as close to the outer edge as possible because that's gonna keep your, your cake stable. So, I know I'm using six straws, so I'm gonna make like a peace sign. <laughs> this cake poking out. One, two, three, four, five. So that's gonna be enough to, to hold up our cake. I'm gonna bend my, my um, cardboard to get it off. Just going to line it up with that outline. And you can use like a knife or offset to just lower it down and get it into place without messing up your fondant. So I'm gonna be putting my buttercream in something that's called a bullet. It's just a way to basically contain buttercream. <laughs> Put my green in there first and just roll it up. Plastic wrap. I am using a size 113 leaf tip. All right, so I'm gonna cut the end of my bullet off. Start with our dark green. All right, 
So now I'm just going to uh, put some leaves just coming over the edge, squeezing and then pulling away at the end. Squeeze, pull away. I'm just going to open up my bag here, pull out my leftover buttercream, put in my lighter color. I'm trying to kind of go in between the leaves, but meh. I don't think it really matters. And then we're gonna take our little um, fondant rings that have been drying. We're just gonna put those right into the buttercream. These won't fall over, you know, like they're so light. Nothing's gonna happen to them. And I always keep my cakes chilled in the fridge until I deliver before they pick it up. So um, this is basically done. The only thing now I have to do is put on our topper. I'm just gonna put just to, maybe two straws. It doesn't have to be a lot to support a plastic figurine. So two straws. You just need a little bit of bar cream. <laughs> There's a little guy that she bought, a little Funko topper, and he fits just right there on top. And we'll probably glue him down, but um, that's it. We're done. Hey everyone, Liz from The Sugar Geek Show. Hopefully you enjoyed my video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel and don't forget to ding the bell so you get a notification every time I make a new video or recipe. New tutorials every Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.